because Jesus is all right. Amen. Amen. We greet you in the joy of the Lord, the power of his might, and we greet you in the beauty of his holiness. We do thank God for this opportunity just to be able to be in the number one more time. We give honor to this very fine pastor, Pastor Hill. We thank this Mount Transfiguration Church family for allowing us to come and to try to offer a little support to these beautiful ushers that God have on station working their stations with. Again, as Pastor Hill have requested earlier, you ought to give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen, 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 amen. God is good, and, 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 and he's just good all, all of the time. Yeah, I, I, I heard Sister Butler, as she was saying so many wonderful things, and I said, God, I know that must be confirmation because one of the passages that we selected to talk a little bit from was the one that she stood right there and talked about and was found in the book of Psalms, Psalm 84 and just verse 10. It said, For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And as I began to listen to Sister Butler, she continued to talk about what she was talking about. She she placed it in my spirit, Pastor Hill, that, that she didn't get in this thing just to get in. But she got in for the long haul. Heard her talk about seven. Y'all 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 may want well to sit down because I tell you, it kinda take me a while to get the roll in. So y'all 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 take the seat. Seventy one years, uh, that's a long time. That's an example. That's for us to realize that when you step into the following of Jesus Christ, y'all not to have a mind to make up that you're going to follow for a few days. But you ought to be in it for the long haul. You ought to premeditate in your mind that I'm going to walk in God's will and I'm going to walk in God's way. You ought to tell somebody that the race ain't given to the swift or the strong, but blessed is he that shall endure until the end. You ought to tell folk that I won't be moved by every wind and every doctrine. I ain't going to let everything blow me to and fro. I'm going to keep my hand in God's hands. Sister Butler, I thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're a living example. And you know what? I, I, I heard Deacon Williams say, God don't have no respect to person. If God done it for you, oh, I know he'll do the same thing. He, he, he'll do it for me. We're going to have some ups and some downs, and every day ain't going to be like Sunday. But that's all right. Trouble don't last always neither. Well, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. We give honor to all of the preachers. You say you got 13 ministers. Lord have mercy. God can do everything except fail. Amen. We thank God for his love and his kindness and for the multitudes of his tender mercy. Well, we've given you one of our verses already. We're here on business for the Lord and I've looked at y'all, y'all have looked at me. We ain't come for that. We come to talk about what God wants us to talk about. So, 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 so you have your you have your, your 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 first scriptures there out of the book of Psalms, 84 and 10. And I want you to kind of look at Proverbs uh, 18 and 24 because there's something there that I think every every good usher got to have. Proverbs 18 and 24 and uh, you can read it when you get home. It says that a man that has friends, even if he does desire to have friend, friends, he must show himself friendly. There's a friend that stick closer than a brother. And I want to talk to encourage these fine ushers from the subject, the characteristics and the attitude of ushers in God's house. The characteristics and attitude of an usher in God's house. Maybe seated in the presence of the Lord and I, as, as I began to look and to search uh, Pastor Hill, I realized that I had to do a distinction on the ushers that's at God's house versus ushers in other places. Because I found out we're living in a time now where you have some of everything going on and, and you do have ushers 
in all kinds of houses. Yeah, you could go down to certain restaurants and you got people standing at the door and they, they usher you right into the restaurant. Uh, those of you who ain't been holy all your life, you, you know that some of the nightclubs, you got some folks standing at the door and they usher you into the nightclub. And, and, and you know sometimes if you don't want everybody to know that you in there, they got a little place they can carry you in the backside where the lights don't shine quite as bright. You, you can be ushered in now, y'all. Y'all, y'all, ain't no need looking at me like, like, like that. Uh, you, you, you're trying to say, well, preach y'all not to say that. Well, listen, I ain't been preaching all of my life. Uh, uh, just a few days ago, I, I, and then I may not be talking about me. I might be talking about my cousin. But either way, either way, the ushers are just everywhere. We, we have these things they're called the lobbyists now. You got folk who, know how to uh, usher you into places where they can lobby you, cause you to do what they want you to do and uh, say what they want you to say and then vote the way that they want you to vote. They're ushers, but they're not in the right place. So when I looked at it, I thought about the characteristics and the attitude that the ushers in God's house ought to have. And I wasn't satisfied with just my own study. I, I had to dig a little bit deeper and find out that there are just some things. And I, I heard Sister, uh, one of the ladies came up and she talked about even as they do whatever it is God want them to do, they do it in a sense with a smile. She said that they don't look at it as being a duty because they find joy and they find what satisfies God even in their ability to serve as an usher. And as I studied and as I looked at this thing, I found out in order for you to be an usher that's going to satisfy God as well as help the people, the first thing you need to do is know that you've been saved. Yeah, you got to be a Christian in order to be an usher because, can I tell you, I heard it uh, said earlier that when folk walk through those doors, the first thing they see are the ushers that's standing at the door. I know, I know what the text said. The Bible already declared that every time we come to the church house, we ought to enter those gates with thanksgiving and come on up into his courts with a praise. But he talking about folk that already know God. Now, I need to tell you that Mount Transfiguration is a beautiful church, a lovely edifice. You got a good pastor. You got good deacon. You got good usher, but everybody that come through these doors ain't got saved yet. Don't let nobody fool you. So, so, so the usher, they, they on post. They trying to do their job. They trying to lead you to a seat that is conducive, one that will be comfortable for you. And so here they are now. They're standing out there, hands of courtesy. They, they're trying to lead you into the house of the Lord where you can sit down and enjoy yourself. And they're doing it in a spiritual and a pleasant way. And all of a sudden, they're just walking down the aisle with the hand extended. And they look back, and you don't sit down right where you want to sit down. And sometimes they look back, and they can't find you. But because of the new birth in Christ, they have so much courtesy on the inside until they're just saying their own mind, God bless them anyhow. That ain't really what they wanted to say, but sometimes when God get on the inside, he'll work his way to the outside. I, I, I know him. You, you can't go down to the bookstore. You can't go over to Kroger and buy this kind of courtesy. You got to get courtesy through the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when you get that, the Bible says that if any man come after me, you got to learn how to deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow the Lord. Every now and then, you got to forget about you. Let the Lord just, just have his way. Because the truth of the matter, it really ain't about you no way. It is about God. You do know that after you got through sleeping last night, you didn't shake yourself this morning. No, no, no. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. You didn't crawl up out of that bed under your own power, but it was the power of Almighty God, for it is in him that you move. It's in him that you have your being. Yeah, so it's really, it's really about, about God, but you got to have, you got to have some 
characteristics. You got to have some attitudes. You got to have certain qualifications if you're going to be a usher in the house of the law that's going to be well-pleasing in God's sight. Now, I know, I know, I know that our ushers have been well-trained. They, they go to these schools and Folk teach them how to put up one finger. That means some. I don't know what it means. I ain't never been no usher. Then they put up two. That that means something else. And uh, y'all know what it means. Y'all got all of the codes. But one thing I do know. One thing I do know. If you got Jesus, you don't need too much of any anything else. A, 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 a good usher. Good usher. First of all, they realize that. They have to every now and again attend to the pulpit. They have to look at their leader and see what it is that he might have a need of. Just glance at him every now and then to see if he's beckoning for you. But uh, Pastor Hill, I found out that there are some ushers who are on the roll at the church house. And I kind of believe they done forgot their real calling in the church house because, you know, we do still have conferences and fall out with pastor a little bit in conference and pastor be nodding and waving and they act like they don't even see him looking all, 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 all out the window. But, but what you need to understand if you're a real usher in the church house, you need to know first of all, you need to lift your eyes toward the hills from whence come of all of your help. And then when you pull your eyes back out the hills, you need to glance back at pastor because he may need something that he wants you to do. Every now and then, you got to have the courtesy that the card of a Christian carries around every day of his life. Now, the next thing uh, uh, this you have to do, you got to be alert. I don't care how willing you are. I don't care how much you want to be an usher. If you're not alert enough, if you can't see without looking in that same direction, you got to be able to look behind you and look to the side and to the right at the same time. You got to be able to see other than just in front of you. You got to be alert enough to get up and see what it is that's going on in the church house. And when folk act like they need some stuff, they all not to have to beg and crawl and faint to get whatever they need. You ought to be there looking to see whatever it is that I can do. Sis God's children since they didn't come to the Lord house. You gotta be alert. You can't stay out all night, Saturday night, nodding and half sleeping and talking about you gonna serve in the Lord's house on Sunday morning. You got to go home and get you a good night rest. You gotta prepare yourself. You gonna worship in the Lord house. And, and, and that ain't only the usher. That's from the pulpit to the door. What I look like knowing that I got to come down here this morning and I'm going to wait till I get here praying and talking about I'm going to open my mouth and the Lord going to put words. No, no, you got to pray to the Lord early in the morning and tell the Lord to meet you at your point of need. You can't pull stuff off the internet that God gave somebody else. That ain't for you. Yeah, too many folk want to be like T.D. Jakes and all of those folks, that's all right if you want to be like T.D. Jake. But, but can I tell you that the message that you sent home and listened to T.D. Jake, that ain't for you. That's for T.D. Jake in that part of house way down yonder in Texas. And when you steal that stuff, you borrow it from the potter's house. God ain't told you to tell your folk all that stuff. So you better know that you've listened and you've listened real well to what God has said. Uh, uh, to you, you got to be alert. You got to be alert. Then you got to be prompt. Can't show up on the first Sunday and uh, holler about I ain't going the next Sunday because they rubbed me wrong last week. You, you, you got to be prompt. You got to be on the job. The Sunday that you declare you ain't coming, that might be the Sunday that they really, really needed you. Then every usher need to be courageous. I don't mean bigoted. I don't mean arrogant. I don't mean nasty. But you ought to be courageous when you stand for the Lord. If you see somebody that come into the church house and they still got on that stuff that they had at the club house, you ought to be bold enough to say, baby, I don't mean no harm, but uh, we got to do something about this. Because you ain't at Club 99 now. You in God's house. 
You ought to look like you. You're in the Lord's house. And even to our men, you know, it's all right. I don't care how robust you look. You know, you, you, you cutting grass and down at some of them other places, it's all right for you to open your shirt and uh, show your little muscles and all of that. But when you come in here, honey, God ain't concerned about your muscles and all of that other stuff. He wants folk that's going to worship him in spirit and, and in truth. Then, then every usher, every usher, you need to learn that you got to know how to be disciplined. You can't sit up and holler about, I've always done it this way and nobody can't tell me nothing different. You got to learn how to discipline yourself. Yeah, your way ain't got to be the right way all the time. I don't care what your position is. And sometimes, Pastor Hill, I think, positions have front the church house. You got some folk who, who been in position for three or four years and they think nobody can't tell them nothing. They think it's either their way or they think it's the highway. But every now and then, you need to let the Lord do a new thing in your life. Yeah, yeah. The Bible declares even to the hymn writer, he allowed him to write a long time ago. He said, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. You can't do what folk used to do in the 40s and 30s and think that's going to satisfy the church now. What you look like coming in here making fires in heaters. Ain't no heaters in here. You got thermostats on the wall now. Yeah, yeah. You got to let the Lord lead you. You got to let him guide you. And you got to let the Lord direct you in every way. And then, 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 then you got to know that you're anchored in the word of the Lord. I said earlier, uh, Sister Butler has represented, and she's done it well, that she made up in her mind a long time ago that she wouldn't be moved by every wind and every doctrine. 71 years serving as an usher, and that's what the Word of God have established into the heart of every Christian who's been traveling this way for a little while. The Bible allows us to know that every now and then trouble going to come. Wind gonna blow in your face and it's gonna cause you to reel and rock. But I heard the Lord give us a promise. He said, you don't have to worry about what's coming your way. He said, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings of eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and they won't faint. The Bible tells us that every now and then when things don't go your way, don't try to make it happen. The scripture said that you ought to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I stop by to tell somebody that every now and then I have to steal away by myself and, and when my way get dark and when my friends get few, I have to learn how to lead and to depend on God. I call him every now and then, early in the morning. I, I call him around noonday and I, I call him late in the evening and I promise you he'll never say no. He, he told me to bring my cast to him and uh, cast him up on him because he truly do care for us and, and, and ushers, I'm just simply saying that when folk act like they don't care when it look like your work is in vain, you hold on to God's unchanging hand because there's a way that's on the way. There's a day and a time when God is going to dispatch an angel and when that angel gets to where you are, he's going to give you two wings that you can bear your feet. He's going to give you two wings that you can cover your face. But what I like about it, he's going to give you two more wings where you can fly away and be at the rest. Yeah, all I'm saying, all I'm, I ain't come back to aggravate nobody. I just come back to encourage you to stay with the Lord. Be humble. Learn how to honor your pastor. Learn how to listen to your pastor. I'm not saying that his way is going to be your way, but I'm saying that he is your pastor. And the Bible says this. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. If you can't deal good with him, just go on down somewhere till you can cool off. Time may not be right to be arguing and carrying on. The Bible says everything that you do in the Lord's house, you ought to do it without murmuring. You ought to do it without complaining. You ought to do it looking like, walking like, and acting like the one who came into this low land of sorrow. Walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem 
gave his life at Calvary's cross, put him in a barber's grave, stayed there all night the first night, stayed there all night the second night, but early the third day morning, he got up with all power, heaven and earth trusted in his hands. I shall stay on the battlefield, stay on your pole, keep looking to the hills from whence come up your hill. And I declare from the word of God, if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, there's a day coming when you're here. The Lord said, we are done, thou good and faithful servant. Come on up higher, because you've been faithful over little down yonder. I want to make you ruler over much up here. You're doing a marvelous job. Y'all doing good, looking good, sounding good, and the pastor's satisfied with the work that you're doing. And not only is he satisfied, but I believe that God is smiling on you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. God bless you and all that you shall endeavor to do. said Mount Transfiguration and at the pastor it said uh, C D uh, C D Hill and I know that wasn't me I know that wasn't me 
So now, with his permission, we're going to open the doors of the church after the preaching of the gospel, singing of that selection, and maybe one in the house who don't know Christ and the free pardon of, of their sins. We do realize that you've been coming this way a long time. But just because you know the ways of the church don't necessarily mean that you know who Christ is. Jesus said in one passage, he said that my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. There may be one who want to learn more about Christ. There may be one who backslidden, and you want to come back to the house of the Lord and be reconciled back among God's people. If you're here, whatever situation you're in, we're going to open the doors of the church. The pastor is right here to my left with his 13 assistants. And I know he know exactly what it takes to get you back into the Lord's house. If you're here and you don't know Christ in the free part of your sin, maybe you want to be reestablished or established at another church. I know he don't have a problem with you going wherever it is that you desire to go. His uh, desire is the same as mine, is that you just get saved, that you come out of darkness into the marvelous light. This is your opportunity. If there's one, two, have mercy, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. See that the Lord has allowed one to come, and we say that God did, because the Bible says that no man can come to Christ except the Spirit of the Lord draw him. Would that be another? Will there be another? What a fine day. Give your life to Christ. The day that the ushers celebrated their appreciation day in the year of our Lord 2019. Will there be another? Will there be another? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. You will find rest for your weary souls. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. God be the glory for the marvelous thing that he's doing in all of our lives. Amen. I want to give the mic now to Pastor Hill and he knows exactly what to do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Give God a round of applause. Give this preaching preacher, Pastor Pat, my friend, beloved, a round of applause. You did an outstanding job. Thank you. Sister Hayes, who do we have and what is this privilege and pleasure for this morning for Mount Transfiguration Baptist Church? Pastor Hill and the entire Mount Transfiguration Church family, guests, and friends, we are honored today. We are really honored today. God has a way of working things out. <laughs> today we have Brother Albert O'Neill Jackson Jr. coming to unite with Mount Transfiguration as a... Watch him. As a watch care member. Give God a round of applause. Watch Amen. Give God a round of applause. Give God a round of applause. Amen. 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 We 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 may stand up now, Albert. Us, you may remove the seat now. I, I, I want to say at this at this time that. Jackson family and I are very close. We, we, we spend a lot of time together behind the scenes. And this young man is very intelligent, smart, bold, brave, courageous, and don't mind the limelight. Give her a round of applause. And, and, and he's going to be a blessing to us. Uh, he's very disciplined, and he's, he, he he went to he went to college uh, as a take college courses as a senior in high school. And he was homeschooled. Give our round of applause. And, and now, Dad, come up here, Mother. Mother, Dad, come up here. Come up here. And Father, come on. Sister, come. Come, come up. Y'all come up with him. Come stand with the family. 
Give our round of applause, they come. Y'all face the congregation. And, and listen, here, here what's so amazing about it. He, he went to college as a senior. And he was homeschooled. Give God a man of Paul. <laughs> as a senior, she going to college next year. Give God a man of Paul. Senior high school. <laughs> and now at the house and said, the fee, I've been shouting. <laughs> He's all A's. I'm used to A, B, C, and you know, I, I go through my alphabet. <laughs> Give God a round of applause. <laughs> but, but he's coming to join us on the, on the watch here. And this is what we do on, on the watch here. On the watch here, that means that he's giving back to Christ. Not moving without us, he's with us on the, the watch here. Isn't that right? Give God a round of applause, Ben. <laughs> and, 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 and I want to commend his parents and his sister for supporting you all, giving them uh, down through the years. And thank God for you all with your great work uh, uh, here in, in the community. And, 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 and listen, and personally, I appreciate your friendship, your fellowship, your partnership. Give God another round of applause. So, so y'all turn and face me now. Come turn. Now we're going to right now open up the, the, the altar, altar call, pay soft music for me. Uh, give our uh, gifted, lifted, blessed magician cool whip a round of applause. And give our drummer Tremaine a round of applause. Won't he do it? Digging that spinning? Won't he do it? Listen, please stand. The altar's open up right now for y'all to come, if you will, to the altar call, altar at this time for a special prayer. Will you come? Will you come for a special prayer to the altar? Amen. Charade and Bell and Thomas, somebody here know you. Y'all know this preacher? That's them. Give God a man of Paul. Give God a man of Paul. Listen, we are, we are so grateful for God. And I'm going to ask uh, his, your son in the house, will you come to the altar call prayer for us? Amen. You come for your pastor, support your pastor, and you get rewarded for good works. Amen. And we want you to come to the altar call and listen. I want to say personally thank you all so much. This week I got a call. One of my classmates passed and they want me to come home and help her. here. My wife and I went home Wednesday and then we spent the time with my brother. Please keep my brother in your prayer. And thank you for all the prayers of our deacons and trustees and ministers. Uh, we needed your prayers and you are with us this week. Thank you for, for staying in touch with me. I like the fact that he can't, I, you call me and I'll return your call. You hunt me down. And to that I say thank you. I don't say personally, Mother Butler, Mother Butler, Mother Mother Butler. Butler. She said, now, I, I thank you for, she gave me some strong words of encouragement this week. Uh, for our eldest active member of the church. You, you gave me some encouraging words this, this week, and I want to say you, you touched my heart, and you, and, and you made my heart smile. Thank you for your service, for your commitment to God and Christ. Thank you for your words, and you don't know how you made my heart smile when I needed it the most this week. Amen. Amen. Listen, what a concern you have. God knows who you are, where they are. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask uh, 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 my brother, minister, to come this time and lead us to our altar call. Can you get the podium mic working? There it goes. It's working, isn't it? Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. I fear no evil, but thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father in heaven, dear God, we come Thank you, Lord. Thank you, with Lord. our humble souls, yes, yes, yes. with our heads bowed, with our eyes closed. Yes, yes. Want to say thank you, God, thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength. Yes. We thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for your grace and your mercy. Yes. Father in heaven, we love you, dear God, and, and we adore you, Father. And we give you the praises, honor, and the glory. Dear God, I ask you, Father, right now to touch each and every one of us here today, dear God. Father heaven, touch us right now, God, from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet, Father. Dear God, I ask you right now to wrap your arms around us right now, Father. Father heaven, you don't know what we are going through right now, dear God. Some of us might be going through a time of trial and tribulation right now, dear God. Somebody might be sick right now, Father. Somebody's going through bereavement right now, dear God. But Father heaven, I ask you, dear God, to be with them right now, Father. And Father heaven, I claim it right now in Jesus' name. Father heaven, I ask you, dear God, that somebody right now, dear God, might be going through some pain in their body, dear God. Tylenol couldn't hear it, dear God. Advil can't hear it, Father. Ibuprofen cannot hear it, Father. But dear God, with your touch, dear God, to heal somebody's body, Father, right now in Jesus' name, Father. Father heaven, somebody in the hospital, Father, that sick and can't get well, Father. But dear God, I ask you, Father, to be with them, Father. To protect them in a mighty way, Father. Father, heaven, you are a doctor in the sick room, Father. Father, heaven, you are a healer, dear God. You can heal them, dear God, where the doctors can't heal. Dear God, touch them right now, Father. And I claim it right now in Jesus' name, Father. Father, heaven, bless our young people today, dear God. Dear God, keep them in the church, dear God. Bless their parents, Father. Father, heaven, I ask you, dear God, to have your angels, dear God, to keep them off the streets, dear God, to keep them off the drugs, Father, to keep them off the alcohol, Father, to keep them in robbing stores, Father. Dear God, be with their parents, Father. Bless them in a mighty way, Father. And dear God, I want to thank you, dear God, Food on the table, yes. clothes on our backs, yes, a yes, roof yes, over our yes, head, yes, Father. Yes. We thank you, dear God. We love you, Father. Yes. Dear God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, Father, yes. who died for our sins, dear God, but rose up, Father, on the third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hands, Father. I want to say thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you, God. Bless this church family, dear God. Bless Pastor Hill, Father. Bless all the other sons and daughters of the house, Father. Bless my pastor, Father. Bless my wife, Father. Not only my wife, but bless Pastor Patton's wife. Bless everybody, Father. And we love you, dear God. We thank you, Father, for everything you've done for us. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Abbott, Abbott. Abbott. Sister Jackson. Jackson. Jackson.
Give God a round of applause. So we ask one of our young adults.